Hello, good people. It's Rob Lee. If you will be slightly patient, our Father will show us a mystery from the Bible that will further our understanding of his plan, the enemy, and how they work. And let me say, I have not forgotten about doing the video about true Israel. It's important to me, and it will get done. Even if I have to do it in increments, the truth will be shown. And what we're going to do today is look at a mystery in Revelation chapter 6, and we're going to tie it in with other parts of the scriptures. Now, most of us know who the enemy is. We know the enemy comes on many fronts and wears many different faces. However, the enemy called Babylon is the key to understanding the enemy in the last days, and that's where we are at. The Bible opens up to some, and for others, they can never seem to comprehend it because they want it to mean something other than what it actually means. Your father did not make his word so complicated that his children cannot understand it. However, just as Jesus the Christ taught in parables because he said he did not want everybody to understand, the Bible is the same way. The scriptures are full of symbolism, and we must have the gift of discernment to understand what is literal and what is symbolic. This is where so many people, they, they cannot go to the next level. Sometimes trees, branches, and mountains are sometimes referred to as people. The same with waters and seas. Sometimes stars can mean the 12 tribes of Israel or the fallen devils, and sometimes it can simply mean lights in the sky. For example, we read in Revelation chapter 12 the following, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her crown, at, and upon her head, excuse me, a crown of 12 stars. The 12 stars are symbolic for the 12 tribes of Israel. And she being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, thirty-three and one-third, and did cast them to earth. These are the fallen ones. Now, you see the symbolism there. Now, the Bible referred to stars for the children of the Almighty Father, and it referred to the enemy of, of the Almighty Father. And we go to Revelation 16 verses 1 through 2, And I heard a great voice out of the, the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. All right, good people, what is Revelation 16? What is it referring to here? Well, this is not a physical disease or a actual physical sore of the body. It's spiritual. It's talking about a spiritual sickness that has come upon the people of the earth. And notice in the, in the verse it says that they, they have the mark of the, the beast. And these are the people that would rather follow the hexagram than Jesus Christ. Yet many of them will profess the name Jesus, Jesus. But I'm telling you, when it comes down to it, they will choose the six-pointed star over Jesus Christ, and it's not even close. This, this is a spiritual sickness. This is the symbolic, the teachings that are in the Bible that we have to be able to, to distinguish between what is literal and what is symbolic. Let's move forward. Ezekiel 6, chapter 6, verses 2 and 3. Son of man, set thy face toward the mountains of Israel, and prophesy against them, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys, Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword a sword upon you, and I will destroy your high places. So is the Father saying that he's going to bring a sword against the land? Well, that doesn't make sense now, does it? He's saying that he will bring a sword against the people in their pompous and sinful ways. He will destroy them in their places of false worship. Revelation chapter 6. Now, this is where the rubber meets the road. We're going to read verses 12 through 17, and it says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as a sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto earth. Now the stars are what? Devils, demons. Even as the fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken out of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Does that mean that the islands and the mountains move? Well, maybe it could be a dispossessed people, if we just think. Now, number 15, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of, of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So we see the devil and all his children and all their followers are scared. 
Now, what happened to all their evil, bravado, cockiness, and destruction? Folks, you start to see the world for what it really is. Jesus Christ is coming back to love his own, and Jesus Christ is going to kick the living hell out of these pathetic monsters. They are not putting him on, on a tree this time. They are not murdering him, and they are not mocking him. No, 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 things have changed. They are running, and they are scared. Yet they say to the mountains and to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from Jesus. Therefore, we need to ask ourselves a question. Who and what are the mountains and rocks that this passage refers to? Folks, there are underground cities, roads, bases, and more all over the United States and many other countries. And I believe that this dates back to another time and has been built upon by the modern followers of the devil. So yes, the devil's willfully underground. In fact, they do this now. They live, exist, plan, and do things that we cannot fathom underground. However, the verse in question is referring to the mountains and people. We just read about it in the verses that I showed you in the book of Isaiah. So the devils are calling out to the people saying to, listen, so I want you to understand this now. The same monsters now who are the, the most evil, sadistic people that walk this earth, they are calling out to the people to protect them from Jesus Christ. And this is what they do now. Folks, these devils cannot survive without the support and protection from the ignorant and blind people. These evil devils have always hidden among the people and preyed on the weakness, ignorance, and naivete of the lost people. They are calling out to those who have received the mark of the beast to protect them. Now, you know they're not calling out to you and I. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take you to the parable of the wheat and the tares, and we will let Jesus the Christ hammer this point home. In Matthew chapter 13, 28 through 30, he said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay. Lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my wheat. Again, we see the devil's children are intertwined among the children of the kingdom. These serpents know where to hide, and of course, folks, we know that Jesus Christ and his army could easily find them far better than any laser-guided system could. However, Jesus Christ is telling us, and the parable is, the devil's own are mixed among the flock of Jesus Christ as to conceal themselves. And if, brethren, if you look around today, that's a, is, that is exactly what they have done. They have made themselves something that they can never be, nor have, nor have they ever been. You actually have a large part of the world referring to them as the anointed, when nothing could be further from the truth. They are living among the mountains of the Father. They live among his people, and they live among the naive and lost souls who follow these Babylonian devils. These are the folks that are blinded, and we come across this in, in Isaiah 66.4 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. This is what people refer to as the strong delusion, but it's been so misused that most people don't even know what it really means. The strong delusion refers to the people that actually follow Babylon. These are the people that have been, they have been struck with blindness they have, they, by the Almighty Father because they will not love him. They would rather love the hexagram. Now, I ask you, does this strong delusion make more sense when we view it through the lenses of the world calling the devil's family the chosen and then turning around and calling true Jacob Israel the enemy? This is why there is so much racism and hatred for Jacob Israel. The asinine remarks made by the ignorant people who think they know the Bible, they call us Esau. Now, these same people, they would not know Jacob. They don't know who Esau is. They don't know Jesus Christ or any other person in Scripture. They, they do not know the beginning of scriptures from the ending. They are not called to know it. The war is against Jacob Israel because this is the Bible. My good people, that is a, a delusion that only the Almighty Father can put on a person. This is why we see the massive propaganda campaign to destroy the truth about Jacob Israel. And in doing so, these devils are training the ignorant and deceived people to shield them. Through Hollywood, they constantly teach the fallacy of being a certain people when they are the imposters and they know this. They use Hollywood to make Jacob always look bad while promoting themselves and their pathetic followers. When they need sympathy, they simply create a false story via the smith munt Act, and we have breaking news, which in reality is a breaking lie. It's a hoax. They are the constant victims, yet in reality, they are the aggressors and they are pathological liars, just as Jesus Christ told them in John 8:44. In closing, the enemy hides among the people, pretending to be of them, when in reality they are of the devil. 
And when the King of Kings returns, they will cry out in great fear to these same people to protect them from the mighty Jesus Christ. Imagine that. With all their bravado now, with all their bluster, with all their hate, when Jesus Christ returns, they do what, what they always do. They run like the pathetic cowards that, that they are. There is a reason why they want to herd all the people together like cattle. They do it now, and what they want to create is the world's biggest outdoor prison. And very few people have any clue as to what's really going on. These monsters are preparing. They are shielding themselves from Jesus Christ. This is why they are creating smart cities. This is why they are destroying so much land through direct energy weapons. This is why Obama sees hundreds of millions of acres of land and water. They are hurting us together, and they will live among us, and they will use us as a shield. They want to destroy the people and at the same time use the people to shield them from the face of Jesus Christ. Folks, this is not a game. This is as real as it gets. Jesus Christ will destroy Babylon and every damn one of, of their followers. He will burn the mountain up and them in it. This is a fact, folks. When the Father sends Jesus Christ back, do you really think that your Father would allow his son to die? All the suffering that has gone on on this earth, do you really think that when he sends Jesus Christ back, that heads are not going to roll and asses, and asses are not going to burn? Folks, this isn't a game. That Matthew 28, 18 says that all power, Jesus Christ, his, his words himself, he says that all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth. All power has been given unto this beautiful being. He is our king. He is our redeemer. He is our kinsman redeemer. He is our everything. I, I urge you, I urge you to wrap your arms around Jesus Christ and don't let go. In the name of Jesus Christ, I appreciate you all.